Got some updates for you on the Toyota Supra. Stick around. All I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am Graham, back with another video, specifically back with another video regarding my 1987 Toyota Supra that I bought a month or so ago. This is uh, part two of the video. Um, got a few clips to show you and kind of show you uh, where we're at with the vehicle and what we're going to do. Uh, don't try to uh, adjust your color on the screen. I am red. It's not your TV. It's not your phone. It's 4th of July weekend and uh, I went down to my hometown of Corpus Christi to watch the fireworks on the Bayfront. It's pretty awesome. Um, they uh, shoot them off from the T-heads down there on the Bayfront. And it's always a great time. Took the family down there, enjoyed the fireworks. And then, of course, being a coastal Texan, when there's a lieu of a hurricane coming and four shark attacks in one day, what do you do? Of course, you go to the beach and you have a good time. So in all fairness, the shark attacks uh, were in South Padre. Of course, I was on Mustang Island, so not real close to each other. However, same ocean, right? Anyway, had a good time. Glad to be back home and give you the uh, update on where we're at with the car. So first of all, what we're going to do is I thought of a name. I had to th I had to name my car. And uh, so after, uh, you know, thinking, okay, it's a 1987, um, I thought, thought of the name. And I think it's pretty badass. So it is officially called Gecko. No, not that Gecko. Not even this Gecko, even though that Gecko is pretty badass. It is the most badass gecko of 1987, and that, of course, is Gordon Gecko from the movie Wall Street, which was in 1987. So you might wonder why gecko. Well, number one, the spelling is pretty cool, right? Uh, but first of all, it's uh, uh, Gordon Gecko was uh, refined. He was polished, like this car, and with a lot of work, which we're going to talk about today. Uh, this car can be pretty ruthless, just like Gordon Gecko was. <laughs> for lack of a better word, is good. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's kind of give you the progress report of what we've done uh, in the last couple weeks since I put up the first video. Um, first of all, the battery was toast. Um, we noticed that it had a sticker on it from AutoZone that it was no more than a year old and it was already dead. So uh, we reached out to, and I say we, I always include Justin in this because he's uh, my mechanic uh, working on the car, but we reached out to Brad, thank you, Brad. Uh, the former owner and uh, got the number, phone number that it was associated with and we were able to go get a brand new battery for the car, which right now with uh, pricing and inflation, it is a $185 battery. So man, that, that was really great to get that battery for free uh, instead of having to pay for that. Uh, but then the original battery terminals were, were ass, they were completely loose and they sucked. So we needed to replace the battery terminals. Uh, so Justin got those and um, put them on, had to clip the cables to get them on. And just a little note, um, when you get brand new battery cables, they come with an epoxy coating on it, not cables, but uh, terminals, they come with an epoxy uh, coating on them. And you got to grind that coating off, otherwise you don't get a proper uh, seating of it onto the battery terminals to get, uh, or the battery, uh, the battery to get uh, a proper fire on it. So. Once we got the battery in, it was pretty cool. We, uh, you know, uh, obviously getting the engine started is the number one goal, right? But to me, the, the pop-up headlights is, uh, is just pretty cool. I mean, I love those about the 80s cars. It's those pop-up headlights. And as you can see, they do work. The horn works. Um, it's electric uh, seats uh, in here. I was able to get the seat back so I can sit in the car properly. Um, the windows, they go up and down, although, you know, they are a little janky. I didn't want to take them all the way down because the, the car is still not garaged. So if the windows got stuck down, I didn't want to have to deal with that. So uh, radio works. Um, of course, the antennas broke, so you don't get any good uh, channels. It's grainy, but of course, being in South Texas, the uh, radio station channels that come in um, perfectly crystal clear, or of course, Tejano station. Hey. Speakers even work too, they're not crackly. So that's good news. So once we uh, got the uh, battery in, we were able to um, put a little bit of, we checked the oil, which there was none. So we put it in, put some new oil in. 
and there is a leak so it's coming out but we needed to to, to try to see if the engine would at least turn um, and it did it turned over we got the spark plugs back in and all that and it turned And then we uh, had to give it a little bit of go juice and um, to see if we can get it to turn over to start up. Uh, and we did that several times until um, we were able to get it to uh, fire up, literally. We good? We good? So in case you're wondering that arm shot there, that's Justin uh, got all of his arm hair burned off on that. Um, but uh, it was pretty cool. However, the, the gas tank is gelled over, so we can't uh, can't really do that. So the next step is we're going to have to get the little gas tank pump and uh, wire it up and to get the car to see if the engine can turn over. So goals still are, number one, I'm sitting in the car now and upon further, further inspection, because I've been on all of these uh, forums on Facebook, and um, just a, a plethora of parts but the uh, the actual back um, plastics uh, the side panels and all that are in excellent condition it's not until you get to the front here that it gets pretty bad but the actual back is in really really good condition so that's good news i'm not gonna have to to buy anything for that uh, but the goal is still to get the car going um, with this engine um, and then a uh, you know, I know a lot of people do a 1JZ or a 2JZ swap. As I said in the first video, I'm not going to do that, but I just went down the rabbit hole of YouTube and uh, watched a lot of videos, found this video here um, that I'll put a link in the description below for you to go check out, and then found a lot of other ones just like it. But um, I, I really like uh, the layout of that. And there's just so much you can do with, uh, you can't really do anything with the 7 GE, uh, 7M GE engine. Uh, it's not until you get to the turbo, the GTE uh, version of this uh, car that there are a lot of mods that you can do. And uh, with, the, with the pricing of 1JZ and 2JZ motors right now, they are sky high. And so what a lot of people are doing is going back to um, the uh, fine and turbo versions uh, the 7m gte model which then you can modify and do a lot so um, just simply by getting one of these engines um, and uh, on ebay for three or four thousand dollars delivered guaranteed to work at least for a month right <clears throat> excuse me uh, you can pop that in if it's a well-maintained engine and just with um, a simple air intake um, you can pop that in and get it close to 300 horsepower just with an air intake and a clean running turbo. Um, then uh, if you want to continue the uh, horsepower uh, upgrade, which I do, um, you can put in an improved intercooler, um, uh, improved fuel pump, larger fuel injectors, um, of course the metal head gasket and enhanced airflow, uh, enhanced airflow meter uh, with some good tuning um, great tuning actually can get the car up to 400 and 450 horsepower as a daily driver. If you want to increase it from that point, you want to look into uh, upgrading the turbo. And with the CT26 turbo charger, uh, hits its limits uh, as they say at 14 psi. And so then uh, upgrading your turbo charger is uh, going to have to come into play. And once again, you get that put in, get it tuned just a little bit, you're gonna be able to do 500 to 550 horsepower, which is perfectly fine for me. I'm actually good with 300, I'm good with 400, but if you're gonna go with a, an engine swap to a 7M GTE, you might as well just do those other things to the car. It's, it's expensive, but not that much more expensive to go ahead and do that. Um, and then of course, if you wanted to get it up to 800 or over a thousand, you have to start you know, looking at changing out the internals, which is not something that I want to do. So like I said, for the meantime, what we're going to do is get this engine running. 
while I continue to fix up everything else about the car. And then um, if, if, you know, we might, we might get this engine going and realize it's blown, that, that it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a crap engine. We'd have to replace it anyway. Um, but in the meantime, I would rather just get the car <clears throat> going, get it driving and fix up everything else about the car. Uh, but we will, in the future, end up swapping this engine with a 7M GTE and doing all of the modifications that I talked about. So if you have any suggestions, please comment below. Again, um, this is not a car that I've owned before and the forums uh, are kind of crazy. You know, you have, uh, you have experts everywhere, right? So um, some people on the forums don't look at it like, uh, like they're, you know, you're asking for help and they just talk to you like you're a dumbass and they're superior. So um, I'm pretty sure those comments are on here as well, but um, drop a comment below and let me know if um, these uh, details that I pointed out about the upgrading on the turbo engine are possible, pretty easy um, with, you know, relatively easy and if that's what you recommend. Also, um, you know, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing, uh, hitting that bell notification and liking the video. Um, and again, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.